Joining me now is Latasha Brown, co-founder of Black Voters Matter, and Gary Chambers, civil rights activist who was the Democratic Senate nominee in Louisiana last year. Thank you both for being here. And Latasha, I do want to start with you, my friend. You were in the um, you were in the church at Ebenezer Baptist when the president delivered those remarks. I wonder what the what the the feeling was when you talked to folks afterwards and your own feeling about you know, this president's, you know, sincerity and how hard he's willing to work to get voting rights passed and whether he thinks it's even possible now. You know, I think it's really interesting. I had, I really responded to the speech differently than I would have imagined. One, I've been a staunch advocate for voting rights and have even protested the president. And what was really interesting yesterday, what I felt that I thought he did an excellent job is centering what this is really about. This really is about our humanity as a nation and that fundamentally we have to lean into that. And so I say that because I think that there were people who wanted to hear him you know, be more political. And then there were those of us, I, myself, I wanted, I think part of what we're fighting up against right now is it's not that our politics are gonna save us, it's our humanity that's gonna save us. And that we have to really recognize that literally our politics have to be driven by those values of humanity, that here we are almost 70 years, we're in this struggle that we're still having this debate in this nation that claims that it is the strongest democracy on earth around making sure that we have a adequate access to people to the ballot. And so we have to really come up, we're coming face to face to the hypocrisy in this nation. We're coming face to face where we can blame a political party, political actors. But the truth of the matter is if voting rights is to happen, that the people have to demand, we have to organize and we have to literally be relentless in demanding that we have voting rights in this nation. Yeah, I mean, that, it, it is so true. And Gary Chambers, this is one of the reasons I wanted to have you on with uh, with Latasha, because I watched your campaign and was amazed by your tenacity uh, in trying to urge uh, black voters in Louisiana, which has one of the largest black populations in the country and in the South. And you put up this video on your Instagram talking about the 10 percent of the 900,000 some odd eligible voters who came out. And I know you talked to a lot of people and traveled your state. What do you think was behind that? Um, and how do you think we can change it? Well, thank you for having me, Joy. And Latasha, I'm praying for you still. Um, for us, it is really just a deep understanding of where we are as a people and the investment that has happened in our state. Uh, Louisiana is the second blackest state in America. We have over 900,000 registered black voters, 1.2 million eligible black voters. But the Democratic Party nationally spent no money in Louisiana. Uh, the state party here is led by someone who uh, does not believe a black man can win statewide. And until we get fundamentally down to the level of understanding what it takes for candidates to be successful all across the Deep South, we're not going to give President Biden or any Democratic president the margins and the numbers that they need in the Congress as well as in the Senate to be able to pass meaningful legislation. We've got to be able to look at the Deep South and see that as center ground for the Democratic Party to expand its base. We've got to be able to talk to people, not just in election years. Uh, I'm launching a new effort this year to talk about civic engagement, civic for the people, so that we can go out and literally just educate people. And Natasha understands that so many of our people are disengaged with politics because there's just not a basic fundamental understanding of what are these people doing. We see it on TV, and Joy, you do a beautiful job of articulating the details, but there's a deeper dive needed for many people just to fundamentally understand what it is when we're asking them to get into the ballot box and go vote. Uh, and no, absolutely. Amen. And, you know, this is your life's work, Latasha. And, you know, one of the things that I love about what you're doing is that you you don't let go of the South and that you're constantly talking about the potential and power of the Southern black vote. Um, so talk about reengaging that, because that is where the civil rights battle was won. And yet it does seem like sometimes the Democrats look past the South and say that's not a region where we can win. And so we're not going to organize there. I will say that until the South is shifted, until we literally, we have to really recognize that the roots of racism actually have grown and buried themselves deep in the South. When we're looking at right now, when we're looking at the national political landscape, that's been shaped by the Southern strategy, right? When we look, if you go back and you read about the Southern strategy and you look at what is happening right now, play by play by play, that's what we see in act. And so what we've been saying, those of us that have been working in the South were saying that you can't afford to write off of Louisiana or Georgia or Alabama or Mississippi 
Those are the states that often what you've seen is you've seen white nationalists and racism. Racist, actually, that's where they built their base. It is not by accident, and I say this often, that Ronald Reagan, when he launched his campaign, he was in Philadelphia, Mississippi. That when Donald Trump launched his campaign, it was Mobile, Alabama. Those are two states so far away from their home state, but they recognize that that's where they could do the dog whistle, that they could actually create white fear, they could actually be able to send those dog whistles out and really be able to create a campaign based on fear and the consolidation of white power. And so what we have to recognize that if we want the America we desire, we deserve, we're going to have to step up and do the work. If today is Dr. King's day, then we have to have a real honest reflection and assessment of how we are actually fighting for democracy and standing in the space, not leaving that to activists, but the corporate sector in America literally has to step up and do the work. The business, all of the business sector, that we have Amen. to really recognize the moment it is. A Amen. Latasha Brown, uh, for whom we all love, um, and the great Gary Chambers. Keep at it. It's great to be in your state, sir. Thank you both. And we'll be right back. Thank you.